Hello friends, today we will learn about anti-hypertensive drugs. Our points of discussion in hypertension chapter will be introduction, risk of factors and complications, regulation of blood pressure, classification and group wise description, pharmacotherapy of hypertension, a stepped care approach, combinations to be avoided in treatment of hypertension, hypertension in pregnancy and hypertensive crisis and its treatment. But today we will focus up to this classification and one group wise description. Hypertension or high blood pressure is a long term medical condition in which the blood pressure in the arteries is persistently elevated. The word persistent is important because when a person if having occasional increase in blood pressure it is not hypertension but if repeatedly blood pressure is more than normal then it is diagnosed as hypertension. It is not a disease itself but rather an important risk factor for developing of various cardiovascular conditions like myocardial infarction, stroke, etc. Now, more blood pressure means what? What is the cutoff value? So, as we know that blood pressure has two domains, systolic and diastolic and its unit is millimeter of mercury. Now, there are various guidelines available for defining these values like Joint National Committee USA, National Institute for Health and Care Excellence UK, World Health Organization and International Society of Hypertension. According to these guidelines, we can say that a person is hypertensive when the systolic blood pressure is 140 mm of mercury or more or the diastolic blood pressure is 90 or more or both. However, GNC 8th report has raised the defining level of systolic blood pressure to 150 for individuals above 60 years of age. According to widely accepted NICE guidelines, hypertension stage 1 means systolic blood pressure between 140 to 159 or diastolic blood pressure between 90 to 99 millimeter of mercury. Stage 2 hypertension means systolic blood pressure between 160 to 179 and diastolic blood pressure between 100 to 109 and severe hypertension if systolic blood pressure is 180 or more or diastolic blood pressure is 100 or more. There are various risk factors for development of hypertension like age more than 55 years in males and 65 years in females. In females it is higher because of the hormonal difference. Then family history of cardiovascular disease, smoking, dyslipidemia that is increase in LDL and triglyceride levels or decrease in HDL cholesterol, diabetes mellitus, obesity and microalbuminuria or GFR less than 60 ml per minute. If hypertension is left untreated, it can cause target organ damage from blood vessels to brain. Hypertension affects many major organs like in heart, it can cause acute myocardial infarction commonly known as heart attack and hypertensive cardiomyopathy in heart failure, hypertensive nephropathy in chronic kidney failure, hypertensive retinopathy to affect the eye and in brain cerebrovascular accident known as stroke and other complications. Hypertension is of two types primary or essential hypertension when the cause is unknown. About 90% of cases are of essential hypertension and secondary hypertension about 10% of cases when the underlying cause is known. For example, kidney disease, vascular disease or certain endocrine conditions like pheochromocytoma which is a tumor of adrenal gland secreting excessive adrenaline and noradrenaline. Coming to regulation of blood pressure, but what the blood pressure actually is? It is the multiplication of cardiac output and peripheral vascular resistance. So if cardiac output is increased, blood pressure may increase and peripheral vascular resistance is increased then also blood pressure may increase or when both are increased obviously there will be increase in blood pressure or hypertension. If we see therapeutic point of view either reduction in cardiac output or peripheral vascular resistance or both shall control the blood pressure. So we can say that arterial blood pressure is controlled by cardiac output and peripheral vascular resistance. Cardiac output is affected by heart rate cardiac contractility and filling pressure and filling pressure is controlled by blood volume and venous tone. So if venous return is more cardiac output will be more. On the other side 
peripheral vascular resistance is controlled by arterial tone so whenever there is vasoconstriction pvr will be more and in case of vasodilatation peripheral resistance will be less so again increase in venous tone will promote venous return and increase cardiac output ventricular wall stress and myocardial oxygen demand this increase in cardiac output due to increased venous return and venous tone is known as preload of the heart while increase in arterial tone will increase peripheral vascular resistance so that heart requires more pressure to pump the blood this is known as afterload of the heart pressure before pumping is preload and pressure in arteries after pumping is afterload now there are three mechanisms in our body that control blood pressure first is baroreflex mediated by autonomic nervous system baroreceptors present on aortic arch and carotid sinus sense the increase or decrease in blood pressure and send the message to medulla of the brain to control heart rate as well as blood pressure second is renin angiotensin aldosterone system whenever there is fall in blood pressure due to reduction in blood volume or deficient sodium this system is activated to increase blood pressure that we have already learned in detail and third are local hormones from vascular endothelium like vasodilatory nitric oxide and vasoconstrictor endothelin 1 for blood pressure regulation the sympathetic nervous system and renin angiotensin system are interconnected whenever there is a fall in blood pressure because of baroreceptors brain will stimulate sympathetic system that will activate beta 1 receptors on heart leading to increase in cardiac output and thereby increase in blood pressure activation of alpha 1 receptors on vascular smooth muscles will increase peripheral vascular resistance as well as venous return and further will increase blood pressure moreover beta 1 receptors are also present on kidney which stimulates renin release and also because of falling blood pressure renal blood flow will be decreased which stimulates renin release from jg apparatus of kidney and thus stimulates renin angiotensin system renin first converts angiotensinogen to angiotensin 1 which is activated to angiotensin 2 by enzyme angiotensin converting enzyme this angiotensin 2 is a powerful vasoconstrictor so it will increase peripheral vascular resistance plus it also stimulates aldosterone release so as to cause salt and water retention and increase in blood pressure there are many vasoactive signal molecules but the major two affecting normal blood pressure are nitric oxide and endothelin 1 nitric oxide synthesized in vascular endothelium and is a vasodilator through generating cyclic gmp in vascular smooth muscles while endothelin also synthesized in vascular endothelium is a prominent vasoconstrictor by acting through mainly its eta receptors present on vascular smooth muscles so let's learn the classification of antihypertensive drugs the first group is diuretics the three types of diuretics are used in treatment of hypertension thiazide diuretics like hydrochlorothiazide chlorothalidone and indapamide isiling or loop diuretics like furosemide and potassium sparing diuretics like spironolactone and aplerenone the second group is renin angiotensin system inhibitors again three types of ras inhibitors are commonly used in treatment of hypertension ac inhibitors like captopril enalapril lisinopril if you have noted the name of ac inhibitors and with pril then angiotensin receptor blockers like losartan candisartan valsartan and the name of arbs and with sartan not those spartans but sartans now you will not forget direct renin inhibitor like elisquiren the next group is sympathetic inhibitors like beta blockers propranolol which is non selective and selective like metoprolol atenolol these are cardio selective or beta 1 selective blockers mixed alpha plus beta blockers like labetalol and carvedilol and alpha blockers like prazosine terazosine doxazosine which are selective alpha 1 blockers while phentolamine is competitive non selective alpha blocker and phenoxybenzamine is non competitive non selective alpha blocker 
then central reacting sympatholytics like clonidine and methyl dopa which are alpha 2 receptor agonists the next group is calcium channel blockers like phenylalkyl amine verapamil benzothiazepine diltiazem and dihydropyridines like nifedipine phalodipine amlodipine nicardipine etc nifedipine group is known as dhps while verapamil and diltiazem are commonly known as non dhps next are vasodilators arteriolar dilators like hydralazine and minoxidil and mixed arterio plus veno dilators like sodium nitroprusside which is used in treatment of emergency hypertension so far it was the preferred drug but nowadays the drug of choice for treatment of hypertensive emergencies is nicardipine let's see mechanisms and side effects of antihypertensive drugs clonidine and methyl dopa act centrally to inhibit sympathetic stimulation beta blockers inhibit beta 1 receptors mainly on heart so as to decrease heart rate and cardiac output and also reduce renin release from jg apparatus of kidney alpha blockers by inhibiting alpha 1 receptors present on blood vessels they decrease peripheral vascular resistance the vasodilators and calcium channel blockers by acting on blood vessels also decrease peripheral vascular resistance direct renin inhibitor blocks conversion of angiotensin 1 from angiotensinogen by renin which is the rate limiting step in ras ace inhibitors block synthesis of angiotensin 2 which is the key otacoid of ras while angiotensin receptor blockers antagonize angiotensin 2 by blocking its at1 receptors spironolactone is an aldosterone antagonist so salt and water retention by aldosterone will be inhibited and diuretics increase salt and water excretion in kidney now we will learn hypertension related aspects of each group one by one the first group is diuretics the thiazide diuretics are one of the first line drugs amongst antihypertensive drugs their mechanism of action is to inhibit sodium chloride symporter in early distal tubules so that sodium ion reabsorption is inhibited leading to natriuresis diuresis the antihypertensive effect initially for few weeks is seen due to diuresis there is reduction in fluid volume and venous return leading to fall in cardiac output and blood pressure but subsequently after few weeks because of compensatory mechanisms the sodium balance and plasma volume are regained so that cardiac output is restored but blood pressure remains low because of reduction in peripheral vascular resistance due to persistent deficit of little amount of sodium which is responsible for vascular stiffness interestingly this thiazide diuretics mediated long term effect on peripheral vascular resistance is similar to salt restricted diet thus thiazide diuretics are only mild antihypertensives and are effective only in low grade of hypertension but their advantages include synergistic combination with most of other antihypertensives but they should be avoided with beta blockers because both increase risk of diabetes mellitus they are quite more effective in elderly patients and also they decrease the risk of osteoporosis by reducing excretion of calcium ions thiazides have flat dose response curve that means if we increase the dose of thiazides after a certain level the effects will not increase much so if a particular drug has flat dose response curve it is safer compared to the drug having steep dose response curve the other advantages are once daily dosing no fluid retention or development of tolerance less postural hypotension and cns side effects and low cost the maximum antihypertensive capacity of hydrochlorothiazide is seen at 25 mg per day Benzoflumethiazide and chlorothalidone are longer acting thiazides compared to hydrochlorothiazide and because of this chlorothalidone is the preferred thiazide diuretic by nice guidelines the adverse effects of thiazides include hypokalemia hyperuricemia hypercalcemia hyperglycemia so contraindicated in diabetics hyperlipidemia and they are also contraindicated in pregnancy thiazides should be avoided concurrently with non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs because ncids by decreasing prostaglandin synthesis induce salt and water retention so decrease the effect of thiazide indapamid is a modified thiazide it is a mild diuretic with long duration of action 
it has additional vasodilator action the side effects of indapamide are less and in difference with thiazide it can be used in patients with diabetic hypertension the loop diuretics or high ceiling diuretics have brief duration of action about 4 to 6 hours and the sodium deficit state is also temporary so the long term round the clock peripheral vascular resistance is not reduced like thiazide so high ceiling diuretics are only used in severe or complicated cases like chronic kidney failure congestive heart failure and marked fluid retention potassium sparing diuretics are used along with a thiazide or loop diuretic to prevent potassium loss and to enhance their antihypertensive effect so basically they are adjuvants so the key points from today's discussion are to reduce the blood pressure either cardiac output or peripheral vascular resistance or both should be reduced because blood pressure is equal to cardiac output into pvr preload means pressure on heart before pumping the blood so it is in relation with venous tone while after load means pressure on heart after pumping the blood so it is in relation with arteriolar tone amongst diuretics thiazides are one of the first line antihypertensive drugs and are preferred for long term use in hypertension treatment because of persistent fall in peripheral vascular resistance chlorothalidone and indapamide are the preferred thiazide or thiazide like by nice guidelines indapamide is effective as antihypertensive at dose less than required for diuresis due to its additional vasodilatation action and indapamide can also be given in diabetic hypertensive patients while other thiazide diuretics are contraindicated thanks for watching and stay tuned for part 2 antihypertensive drugs